Britain's new prime minister snubs President Biden in order to speak with the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Germany attacks Russia, further pushing the world towards World War III. And the truth about President Biden's maneuver to avoid a last minute railroad shutdown has been revealed and many are not happy about it. All of this and more in today's news update. Now, in the past few videos, I've stressed the three big F words, food, fuel, and freedom, all of which seem to be under attack in recent years. If you missed my interview with veteran stock trader Todd Bubba Horwitz from yesterday, please don't miss it. He shares his 44 years of uh, stock trading wisdom, insight about the country, the stock market, and how we're losing our freedom. So make sure to go watch that video. Now, a new report has just been released from the Fraser Institute on data about economic freedom indexes. This index tracks size of government, legal system, property rights, sound money, freedom to trade internationally, and regulation over 165 different nations. And they released the United States data, uh, and it shows that the United States has gone backwards by decades in freedom, trade, and sound money. Now, after tracking all the data from these 60, 165 nations, the Fraser Institute found the United States, compared to itself, has the same level of money strength and freedom as the United States back in 1980. So we've gone backwards. Uh, when compared to other nations, the United States is, uh, when it comes to uh, wealth, freedom, and working money, it, it showed that we are basically back in the, in the Jimmy Carter era when President Carter was in office. So we've definitely gone backwards big time when it comes to the strength of our money, our freedom, the way that our government works, our legal systems. So uh, this is not good. Now, the scary part is the Fraser Institute says the data that they tracked does not include the COVID lockdowns of 2021 or the stock market crash of 2022. So it will be very interesting to see their data as it comes out for the following year. An anonymous stock trader is sick of watching one in five members of Congress get rich off of stock trades based on insider information. So he or she, because they're anonymous, plans to create two funds that will be publicly visible and available for people to invest in. One fund will track the best performing stock of Republican members of Congress, and the other the best performing stock of Democrat members of Congress in order to give the little guy the ability to walk the same path or ride the coattails of those in Congress receiving insider information. For example, it was released today that Democrat Representative Alan Lowenthal's wife sold a large trove of Boeing stock one day before it was made public that Boeing was guilty of faulty airline equipment. That stock dropped like a rock, but the Lowenthal's didn't lose a dime. Republican John Rose sold between 100000 to a quarter million dollars of Wells Fargo Bank stock just days before the bank was found guilty of opening dummy accounts to boost their annual fee revenue. Now, I have a lot more important news to share with you, but first, a word from today's video sponsor. I want to thank today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Casey and I use HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh has saved the day several times since our kids have gone back to school. Between work and school, dance and jujitsu, we can forget to go to the grocery store uh, because we're basically full-time taxi drivers after work. But recently, I wondered, what could I make quickly to feed the kids? Then I remembered I had yummy tacos from HelloFresh sitting in my fridge with all of the ingredients and everything I needed. It was easy, delicious, and I didn't hear a single complaint from my kids or my wife. 
So go to HelloFresh.com and use code STEVEN16 to get 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's right. HelloFresh is going to give new customers 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts to try them out for becoming a new customer. All right, now let's get back to today's news update. Well, Germany may have poked the bear in order to avoid citizens freezing this winter. As you know, Russia has stopped all Gazprom gas to most of Europe. The country most affected by Putin's weaponization of energy is the country of Germany. But yesterday, Germany had authorities swarm the property of three Russian oil refineries and has taken them over as now state-owned and state-controlled. Uh, they are trying to take the oil um, for the people of Germany. Now, Russia is not happy about this move, as you can imagine, having uh, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars worth, worth of their liquid assets taken over by another country. And they say that they will punish Germany for this brazen act. Now, I don't know what that means, but so far, uh, Putin has found ways to get revenge or extract um, assets from other countries. So I don't know exactly what we're going to see as this information has just come out in the last 24 hours. Now, some economists worry this event or one like it could kick, the, could kick off World War III as Russia will not take lightly having its refineries stolen and taken over by a foreign nation. Now, we got a preview uh, of what might happen uh, earlier this summer. Uh, Poland and surrounding countries up by Sweden and Finland tried to block Russia's train transport system from delivering Russian goods and services and military supplies and Russia retaliated and basically choked off these areas with energy and food until they relented. And so many worry that we're going to see something similar to this. Speaking of energy, Gautama Adani of India just quietly unseated Jeff Bezos of Amazon as the second richest person in the world behind Elon Musk. Adani has been quietly buying up coal and energy plants He's also the largest investor in green energy. With the energy crisis going on all over the world, the value of his companies has skyrocketed him too, being the second wealthiest man in the entire world. Now, as you know, Xi Jinping of China met with uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia for the first time face-to-face -face since the COVID lockdowns. Much of what was discussed is not and likely won't be made uh, public. However, what was made public was the Prime Minister of India calling on Putin to stop his provocation of World War III and to basically uh, mend the fence with Ukraine. He said that uh, Putin is upsetting global stability while the world is on the verge of financial collapse, food shortages, and water shortages. Now, Modi of India chastised Putin on the world stage and told him it's time to end the war in Ukraine. He said, this is not the age of war anymore. It's time to put the two countries on a path towards peace. So uh, I, I hope that Putin will heed the words of Modi and seek for peace. Uh, India has become one of the largest buyers of oil and gas from Russia, so they may have some level of influence. Uh, at this point, Russia has little to gain and much to lose by continuing their war in Ukraine. Now, they've made their point about Ukraine joining NATO. I think they've also uh, secured the geographic buffer between Russia and the rest of Europe that Putin wanted for Russia. So hopefully, uh, Modi and China can continue to put pressure on Russia to end this war. However, the big worry from the meeting that happened uh, yesterday is the private conversation that took place between Iran, Russia, and China. These groups seek to usurp the United States power and break up the hegemony of the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. Now, gratefully, Saudi Arabia was not part of these private uh, conversations, 
Saudi Arabia so far has kept their word of accepting only U.S. dollars for oil. Uh, and this is, this is what stands between the United States dollar remaining in power and the Chinese yuan skyrocketing in global influence. But now we find out that Saudi Arabia will be having private meetings with the new prime minister of Great Britain and the United States is being blocked from being a part of that conversation. So I don't know what's going on or why they don't want the United States involved in that conversation. But the Prime Minister of uh, the United Kingdom and the, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia will be meeting uh, in order to figure out a relationship going forward. Now, some analysts worry uh, Biden may have just opened a door that will be very hard to close again. As you know, the United States just avoided a railroad strike in the 11th hour, a strike that would have crippled the supply chain and shut down the United States. But what many don't know is that in order to avoid the strike, the White House had to offer $11,000 bonuses to all railroad workers, uh, additional paid days off, and an immediate 25% boost in railroad worker pay. Now, other unions are paying attention, and most unions, as you know, are loyal to the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is all about unionization and not really about free capital. This is a known thing. This is not political, right? Now, some experts are saying that other uh, unions are going to start demanding, where is our five-figure bonus? Where is our extra paid time off from the government? Where is our overnight pay increase of 25% from the federal government? So the White House essentially used taxpayer money or borrowed money to buy off these workers and avoid the railroad strike. Now, I want to be clear. I'm, I'm grateful this shutdown didn't happen. It actually had me very, very nervous. But this opens the White House up to more and more unions demanding money from the U.S. Treasury in order to do their job. And this is where things get really, really dicey. Similar to the student loan debt forgiveness, while I'm happy for those that may receive uh, student loan uh, debt forgiveness if it makes it past the courts, I also know that it angered about 120 million other Americans that don't have student loan debt. So the White House is walking a fine line between saving the country through throwing money at problems and opening new problems that want money to be thrown at it. So it'll be really interesting to see what the ripple effect is over the coming months with the railroad strike, other unions, and the student loan debt situation, and those that did not receive ten dollars to $20,000 of debt forgiveness. Now, while the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Liz Truss, says she won't be speaking with President Biden while he's in the United Kingdom to honor the late queen. She did say that she wants to have private conversation with the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. Now, again, it's not really clear why this is happening, but I'm, I'm guessing it has to do with oil production for the United Kingdom or possibly accepting the pound versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, but either way, these private conversations, I'll, I'll try to keep my community in the loop on what goes on with this. I, I don't believe the United States would try to hurt, uh, or excuse me, I don't believe the United Kingdom would try to hurt the United States because we are now uh, larger than them by several factors, right? 10x, 100x. Uh, but it doesn't mean that with this new uh, King put in order and a new prime minister that they won't try to create a better situation with Saudi Arabia and with OPEC. So either way, the media, the media is calling this private meeting very, very suspicious. Now, the line to pay your respect to the late queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, is now 30 hours long, but people seem to be willing to wait it out in order to say their last goodbyes to the Queen of England. The creator of the Phantom of the Opera musical has decided that after 35 years of doing the show, it's time to close down next year. 
19 million people have experienced the Phantom of the Opera, and it brought in $1.3 billion. It will definitely be a musical uh, that will be missed, and I was sad to read that in the news today. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Make sure to take 20 seconds to look in the video description and follow the link to be one of the winners of the $6,000 in cash that Casey and I are giving away, thanks to generous video sponsors. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Make sure to check out the interview from yesterday's video. It was full of really important information. If you have money, a 401k, an IRA, you want to know what's happening with the Great Reset, with the fuel situation, and with uh, Wall Street, definitely do not miss this incredible interview. Hey, I appreciate you being in my community, and I will see you on the next video.